riparian buffers, very critical, very key, very good for wildlife, very good for water quality. It's not hard to do. If you got a big bottom and leaf, it's bigger than normal, than just a little 50 feet, and selectively cut trees out of it. Those big 28 inch cherry bark oaks that are worth a lot of money, you can get some of those now and then through there. You can see here's a right pair buffer that goes through a lot of properties. You can see this, this stand had a lot of activity. You can see the pine plantations, you can see new cuts, you can see the creek is intact, and that water is crystal clear. You go look at that water, it's just pristine, it's just crystal clear water running through, and a lot of forestry activity. So we can do all of our activities and still have good water if we do some of these, leave our stream buffers intact. In Louisiana for intermittent, so it carries water some of the year, some of the year it doesn't, but it's got banks, intermittent stream, 35 feet. If it's perennial, it carries water all the time, less than 20 feet, 50 feet, and wider, 100 feet for Louisiana guidelines. Uh, we're not too far from Arkansas. Arkansas uses slope. So most of their slope in South Arkansas, less than 7%, they're 35 foot buffers. Those are the minimum that we leave on those. Here's a buffer that I left. You can see that there's, there's the creek, and that would have been the buffers if I would have left the buffer. But I took a look at it and said, well, why don't I just leave this buffer? That was my stream buffer, and that became a management stand. The good things we did, you can see creeks were crossed at right angles, which minimized our surface area when we went across the creeks with culverts or bridges. This stand has been cut three times since the 80s in over seven figures of money. If you went out there today, it's still a forest, still trees. They've just come through and selectively cut through this stand. This is where that big cherry bark was growing. It's a super site for quality hardwoods in this area. Maintain cover weak areas in the creek. They're securing it up with a rock crossing. Sure it up so you don't get that sediment in. Revegetating the logging roads when they're done. Uh, we can put millet on in the summer, we can put ryegrass in the winter, you can put a plant mix on there, spread the logging slash back out across the site uh, is a good thing because they're piling it up there where that <coughs> machine is cutting them and loading them and they can take those limbs and drag them back out across the site and that's a good way to cover the soil. Harvest in dry periods, close the temporary roads, this is one way to do it, but this way makes a launch for the four-wheelers and the motorcycles. <laughs> So you might make more of a hazard doing this. And you can see where they've been jumping this thing. This is another alternative. If you're not gonna use the road, you can just close it off. And you can look at the grass behind it, see how good it's growing versus the side where traffic is still occurring. And putting these little ditches out on your road, you can see the sediment coming down the road and then it goes back into the forest where it gets trapped and, and it doesn't end up in the creek. So you can look at the pine straw and stuff catching all this dirt so it's not in the stream. It's going back into the forest. If you look down the road, look at these little white spots all down the road where they got a, a rolling dip, water bar across the road. It's catching that sediment, moving it off, and the road doesn't have gullies and stuff in it. A very good practice that, that could be done. When we do these things, we get good habitat. We get water for irrigation. We get protected wet areas, uh, improved fisheries, and that scenic Bayou Bartholomew coming through North Louisiana, South Arkansas. Potential development when you got that for canoeing and stuff. High quality trees, useful in wood products. <music>